Hello and welcome to Milestone Mindset Live. I'm your host, Nancy Sargent, the founder of Sargent Marketing and the creator of the Milestone Marketing Blueprint. I am here with film editor and producer Keith Salmon from Los Angeles. I'm live from New Jersey. And we're going to talk about today what it takes to make a a film, especially an award-winning film, and um, and what the impact of that is. So Keith's going to give us the insider perspective. How are you today, Keith? Good, Nancy. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I love having you as a guest. You are a repeat guest. And um, we are going to get right to it and have you talk about this corporate film that you made. It is the Media and TV Award uh, awards that your film is getting at the Cannes Festival, right? Coming up, I think this week. Coming up next week. But lo- yeah, uh, let me uh, let me set the stage for you. Please do. Um, so basically, you know, we talk about filmmaking, and we talk about corporate films. We talk about movie making, uh, TV commercials, advertising. It's, it's media. It's media creation, and that's what we're surrounded by. You know, we we look at Netflix. We see advertisements on shows like that we see movie credits and you see the cast of the cast and crew of thousands that unfortunately netflix kind of pops to the next episode without unless you're really quick on the draw to see what goes into making a film so i might just want to talk about a little bit of the genre that we're talking about here it's called um the part of the reason that we're talking about this uh particular film is uh just because we have a timely um announcement that we had uh, given to us a couple of weeks ago about um, the con. There's a a festival there. It's not the con film festival, not to be confused with that, but it's in con and it's in uh, uh, the same place, but it's called the corporate, uh, the it's a con international corporate media and television awards festival. So um, I had been asked to produce this film for a company here in Los Angeles called Mobile Relay Associates uh, slash Raycom. And um, I'll talk about them just in in a bit here. But uh, to our um, people had suggested that we we entered this short film. It's a 14 minute, uh, what's it called? A branded documentary. And um, some people from the outside suggested, who had seen it, suggested that we enter into some festivals. And that's what we did. And I mean, I don't know if I'm so surprised, you know, sometimes when you, you get a, an announcement, you, I literally read the announcement a few times before I could uh, really make sure that I was reading it correctly. And it said, but we were a winner. We won the best branded documentary uh, award for that festival. That festival is coming up next week. I'm leaving uh, a little early, leaving on Wednesday today. You know, I know this is evergreen, but we're leaving in a couple of days to go down there to go over there, all the way over there, and um, pick up that trophy. Uh, and there's, you know, there's an outside chance. I don't know. Uh, there's other individual categories that that are possible that we might win for story, for uh, directing, for the kind of technical, uh, the movie making side of it. But the overall uh, category w- was um, literally they call it the coveted Dolphin Award at this festival. And it's a statue. And then there's another category that we got a finalist certificate. So it was um, a festival. We're, we're very proud of it. Uh, let's just say we're very proud of it. A festival of about approximately 900 films. It's all a film. It's not a film and media. Uh, it's not a uh, print ad. Sometimes there's advertising uh, award shows where there's all kinds of mediums. Uh, but this is all about uh, video and corporate films uh, for non you know, not not on the mainstream uh, advertising uh, platforms. So uh, 900 approximately films. I think there's 45 countries. And we're one of um, the minority of entrants that have won something at this festival. So we're very proud of that. And I know that you were proud of it even before this distinction, and you certainly did not set out to make a film just to win an award. Uh, Part of what we're gonna talk about today is why does it matter to be an award winner 
of any sort, especially the stature for your client. And, um, and a branded documentary, that is a, that's an important distinction because I don't think people really think of it that way. I mean, documentaries um, are such a credibility booster. And uh, so why don't we talk just a moment about what is a branded documentary? Well, it's a category, it's a good, really good question because, you know, it's really a style, honestly, to, to my experience, it's a style. Um, my background comes from commercial making and specializing in, in film editing. And I gravitated towards real people, quite a, you know, honestly, documentary style TV commercials, unscripted, basically that, uh, when it was unscripted, that kind of qualified it as documentary, you know, of course they knew know what they're going to talk to, but I could take, kind of get become known for taking, uh, I'm going to almost swear, but I won't swear hundred percent, but, but a crap load of dialogue, people talking and making sense of it all, you know, say take three, four hours of someone speaking on a topic, uh, Saturn, tele, Saturn car commercials were something I was known for Levi's, uh, things like that, where you would, you would just freeform this dialogue uh, directing and make a make a story out of it and that's that's sort of like what followed me around into some some work so so when you what we did in this film in terms of you know there's a, certainly a documentary style there's some dramatic um, actors in the beginning set the stage for what this industry is let me just uh, yeah. tell you a little bit about what the industry is it's um, it's a two-way radio company. Uh, it, it, it sounds very vague and ambiguous, and that's part of what our challenge was to get people to understand what we're even talking about. So imagine that you're you see a fire department or a sheriff's department or a tow truck driver, or you're at a special event and you see all of a sudden you. When I mention this, you'll start tuning into this. So everyone's got a walkie-talkie on their belt or on their you know the police have the thing or they're talking you know one M twelve calling all cars you know, radios, if you've watched Narcos kind of on the dark side, they all had radios, two way radios It's different than cell phones. Um, and they're still being used, you know, all in many, many industries. So um, throughout, imagine, you know, the 50 year anniversary of the cell phone, um, first cell phone call was this year in 2023 in 1973 was that very first cell phone call. It wasn't to say that there weren't mobile telephone calls before. Mobile telephone calls were part radio, part telephone line. Um, so what happened in the industry, the company that I am doing this film for, Mobile Relay, they've been around since 1975. So that's just, you know, that first cell phone call was 1973. The first consumer cell phone, in other words, that wasn't marketed to the public for another eight or 10 years after that. Um, so the technology was there, but so parallel to the cell phone industry was this two-way radio industry that had been going since the 1930s. So it's like, how do we tell where we are now without saying where we come from if we wanted to make a comprehensive story about this industry? And that's what the client did. They came to me and they said, we want to do something that's never been done in this industry. And we want it to be entertaining. We want it to be informative, but we don't want to talk over people's heads. We don't want to, we don't want to get into such technical jargon that no one will understand what we're talking about. Because if we make a technical film, our audience is going to be very, very tiny full of the technical people that understand what we're talking about. Um, so it became part documentary about the industry and our client doesn't even pop into it doesn't even show up until you know it halfway through not even well not 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 quite halfway through but but uh, it it needed to ha have the table set in in a way that would would let us know what we're talking about get us an idea about you know because I think the opening line is we've all had a, a set of walkie talkies at one point in our life. Everyone. And, and so it's like, how does it work? Did you ever wonder how things work? Everybody wonders how it works, but you just take things for granted. And 
and when you then you say, well, okay, those things that you buy at Best Buy or the box store or you order it online, mm -hmm. and you just pick it up and you start talking, you run across the street and you're talking to your friends. Um, it works. The thing is, it works because it truly works. But it talks on one set of technology. So when you take that on a little bit further down the line, try to bring that into a you know professional situation. It's the same technology, and basically, the more the more you need to rely on those that type of communication for something that's potentially uh, you know life saving or say emergency. And things like that, you have to have safeguards that that would you wouldn't normally think of. You just everyone thinks it's just automatic, but it's not at all. It's very very planned, and um, that's why we have so many frequencies out there. So, uh, how could we make this? It had it, we knew it was going to be a comprehensive look at the history, so it it had to be part part documentary. We had to rewind and go back and say, okay, in Bayonne, New Jersey was the first time they put a repeater station up on a mountain so that we could extend the coverage of a radio. Bayonne, uh, New Jersey is also where my husband was born. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It, 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 was, uh, it, it, was, it was incredible. So, I mean, and then, of course, it spread, the technology spread like wildfire, and then uh, certain points along the way, it kept getting better and better and better. Um, so uh, that kind of thing that kind of thing right there. So uh, anyway, so we're, we're uh, heading in that direction so that it became a branded documentary because we put our company in interjected in our, into the uh, company. Let's take a step back and, and talk about why this project was um, right for your client and what they wanted to accomplish this to, and why they would embark on such an endeavor because this was um, over a year in the making, if I have that straight. And um, and who was that audience? You referenced who an audience would be if it was too narrow. So what did they want from this? Well, part of it is they wanted to be they wanted to be recognized for their position in the industry. The uh, the leader of the company, Mark Abrams is his name. Um, is very innovative pioneer in the industry in, in the California area. Um, part so part of it is the recognition, um, and so so you want to make a mark for it, and you wanted to do and you wanted to do something that's going to be seen by your peers, and you're going to want to take the the project a project like this gets integrated into a a real business development model. It seems like an old fashioned type of uh, set of of sort of like procedures when you take uh, when you take say these clients aren't people that will just buy a radio as a consumer it's a real business to business type of of, of uh, arrangement so sometimes the uh, I hate to say it but closing a deal on a client could take a couple of years and so you take a little bit of time to really let them understand the technology to let them understand the um, what they're getting themselves into, which type of radio system would be right for them, and it's a real sit down email. It's a real it's a real moment in time when you would share this thing. You just don't pop it into you just don't pop it into uh, someone's um, Instagram feed. It takes a little bit more development like that. So the the client base is is their target and the client base is relatively a smaller base. But however, it's one of those things that, that the general, we wanted it to be, uh, we wanted it to be um, digestible for a, a common person, a, a regular, a regular person, uh, because they may be in an industry that they hadn't even considered it before. And so we're, we look for those far and wide. It's not a wide sweeping, uh, advertising campaign like you would say for some sort of product or something like that. It's more of a service. It's, it's definitely a service industry. Um, the radios come with the service. So basically what they're providing is airtime. It's airtime. So you're looking for those types of those types of industries that 
typically would be using this type of communication. And, and so it's, it's kind of a little bit hard to describe, but it's, it's a little bit uh, one at a time, but it's very valuable because say when they have, when they do say close the deal on, on a particular client, it could be years and years of, of, of that client being their customer. And sometimes those clients are rather, rather big. Yeah, for, for some reason there, Nancy, I'm not able to hear you right now. Sorry, put that on mute for a moment with a little background. Um, you did reference consumer ads, which we've all seen the ads that you've done over time, for sure. And this branded documentary and long form and its goals and everything. And that cycle of it could take years to close a deal of the magnitude that this client that hired you to do this could take. Um, but the branded documentary can also be used for things that don't take years to, to close. And they're also part of the entire marketing mix and which you handle for this client. So we are specifically talking today about a documentary style, a documentary marketing piece. It is that. And so I know that the way you dove into this and you, the way you dove into this client was understanding everything about it. And, um, and we're talking pretty seriously here and without people seeing the film, but you have Bigfoot in here and, you know, space flying people and uh, try to just describe a little bit, if you would, about the way you made this humorable and watchable while also respecting the brand and and the firsts and everything that they did. You, you have a real art for that. Right, well, let me, first of all, it's a good question. It, you know, it's a good question. Um, first of all, I'm gonna give all the credit to Mobile Relay and the guys over there, Mark. There's three guys named Mark. They're, they're um, it's, uh, I, I don't know if it's a requirement to be named Mark to be hired to the company. I'm just teasing about that. But but everybody had a, a significant role. Mark, there's Mark Abrams, who's the uh, the CEO and the founder of the company. He's been, you know, he's been his life is in this radio industry. And Mark uh, Lidike as well is, and he also gave us a really amazing um, uh, element of of our production value, which is our, the drone photography in, in the, in the piece. He's got, he's, he, it, it's kind of a twofold thing with him because they, this company has, you, you'll be, um, you'll start looking at these things when you go driving past mountaintops and high, high elevation, you'll see these giant towers, you know, some of them are television, some of them are radio microwave things. And so, you know, so this, our company mobile relay has got towers all over Southern California, big, towers. It's a line of sight technology. So you have big towers up on high elevations that shoot the waves down to the people on the ground. Um, so uh, part of what they do is they use the drones to check the towers for damage and needs repairs so they, they don't have to climb the tower. So with that comes this residual beautiful footage of this amazing landscape and mountain tops and things like that. So and then Mark Valera, we, I call him the financial and uh, special uh, uh, and spiritual advisor. So he's kind of shepherding the project through. So all the credit goes to them for presenting me with this idea. Is like, look, we want to have some fun with this. We want to have, um, we want to maybe pay some homage to some classic moments in cinema, and 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 humor and things like that. Roger, Roger, because it's tech. I mean, it's with the walkie talkies. I, I should have a, I should, hang on one sec. I'm going to run out. Don't leave. I had to get a prop because if I didn't get a prop, if I held the cell phone up to, to my head, it'd be like, whoa, that's almost like blasphemy. This is not a cell phone industry. It's a, a you know, walkie talkie. So Roger, Roger, or give me the clearance, Clarence. Those things, we do a little bit of an homage to those that type of sense of humor and um 
at one of our meetings, we were talking uh, uh, technical and it was like getting, wow, it's getting, this is getting complicated. This is because I had to really kind of embed myself in the company just to even understand some of this stuff. I had a basic understanding, but it's pretty technical. I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. So one day it was even getting, getting so far over my head that I said, well, this is kind of like the twilight zone. Oh, this conversation is like the twilight zone. And there, that spawned an idea for a little section, a surprise section near the end of the film when uh, the announcer says something to the effect of the customers say it's effing magic, FM, because that's the only thing you can, it's sort of like if you find God, <laughs> find, you basically, you can't understand, if you understand everything about God, you're the only person in the world that has ever done that. So with this sort of radio technology, it's the same thing. It's like at a certain point in time, you have to just surrender that it's just it just works. You don't really need to know how it works, but it works. So, but we demonstrate that with with Mark telling us a little bit too crazy in, in too crazy of a way. And suddenly I put him in the twilight zone. He's floating around in space. The towers are tumbling and 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 he's trying to explain that it's not effing magic. But then the announcer finally gives up and says, well, maybe it is effing magic. And so, so that's kind of how it was. It just needed to be a little bit. Uh, we just intentionally wanted to um, engage people, uh, keep them on their toes, keep them, and keep the story moving. Keep it moving, and keep you know, just the, nobody knows what's coming around the corner. Nobody knows what's next. And just when you think it's going to get into a big long story, just pop them with another one until the very end. And so far, so good. I mean, the response has been really, really good. And sometimes the, the people that are, you know, we, uh, we've we shown it to people that are, they're going to tell us uh, the way that it is, you know? So in other words, a kind of a tough critical audience. So we're, I think we're on the right track. And, you know, the litmus test here is really this, this award. You know, it's a, it's a, if you took a look at the jury panel of judges on this, you'd go, there's no way. <laughs> There's no way that they would, uh, you know, it. But they're judging on a, on on their um, their criteria, and somehow or another, uh, you know, we're be we're we're going to get a little recognition, and it just uh, it really it really it really does help. And actually, when I was looking, I was looking through some of the stuff. Uh, you know, this is this is an award I got for a documentary several years ago. And it's sort of like I was thinking about it. You know, why would you mention this? Why would you have these things around? And I have a couple of movie posters here I was going to bring up and just show. It's like when you when you go into the like the doctor's office and he's going to do an operation on your knee or something like that, wouldn't you want to see something like this on the wall? It's not even if it was from 20 years ago or 15 years ago or 10 years ago. It's like, "Oh, that's old news." Would you say, "Hey, take those things down. I don't want to see those?" No, you would want to see them. You'd want to see the 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 documentation of an accomplishment in, a, in an area of expertise and that's what these awards are it's it's not just hey yeah, some some crazy guy just threw a bunch of crap together and threw it up there and it's art it's really not that it's a, there's a there's a method and a madness to getting something like this done to that next level a friend of mine calvin who i met on a movie many years ago it's like hey you know and everybody can, you know, some people can, you know, everybody can say even, a, let me just jump, I'm jumping back here. It's like even an editorial film editing, anybody can get a first edit, but not everybody can go through the revision process. Say if you're working for an ad agency or a, or a studio or a director or something like that, not everybody can make the changes that have to come around to make it great. Throwing images and music and voiceover together is one thing, but making it great is at a whole different level. And so that's what these awards are, are there. So if you're if I compare it to the doctor and the diplomas on there, he's getting a certificate saying that he's qualified to make your operation go great because pretty good is not the way you want to get through life if you're going to get knee surgery or something like that. It has to be great in order for a full recovery. So I like to use that as a comparison, um, what these awards are about. 
And I'd like to talk about a few things to, to weave some threads into this. First of all, the whole branded documentary is part of a strategy, a marketing strategy for the client to help them get and close business and create more, generate more revenue. Awards submitting to them are also part of the strategy for the client and for the producers, the, the marketing team, the film team, et cetera. Mm -hmm. It's credibility for everyone. It's also publicity, positive publicity that not only can those who provided the service of creating the film use, but so can the client. And it also shows the stature of what Mark, Mark and Mark wanted from this. So um, all of this is, is just very purposeful and, and has many, many legs for using it as well as it's a 14 minute film. Some people are going to watch the full 14 minutes. Others are going to watch parts of it and you're going to use clips of it and the client will use clips of it. So there's just, um, it's not a one time piece that you've created for them. And I think that's really important. So we, we did title this, the impact of a core, an award winner really is, is the, the point of it. And the credibility um, also goes back to that now lives online forever as well. So there's just lots of strategic reasons, strategic marketing and revenue generating reasons for making these decisions. So to put you on the spot a little bit, I wonder if you would maybe give a handful of points of who should consider a branded documentary in their marketing. It's not only for super technical products. And like you said before, in the beginning, I will hold up my cell phone. Most of us just care that the cell phone works and the walkie talkie works. But for Mark, Mark and Mark's clients, they need to know more. So who else would benefit from having branded documentaries? Well, it's just basically, everybody's got to look at their marketing st structure, their, their marketing structure. It, uh, so th this film, our, our film turned out to be a branded documentary. I don't know that we've set out to make it a branded documentary. It just turned out that way. I, I think that some people um, are, are set for that kind of thing. It really all depends. It's more about the client and and what 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 they're what they're trying to do, you know. So I, I mean, I look at a lot of the work that I've done in the past, and I wouldn't have necessarily called it branded documentary, but other people would have. And I just sort of like, well, like a corporate film when they talk about what they've done in the industry. Honestly, the first film that I did for Mobile Relay could have been called a branded documentary. So that's about uh, about um, you know the c company, the position, what they do, who they serve, and how they you know how they how to get in touch with them. You know, so that you know it's an ad, it's a corporate film, it's a branded documentary. So I, I guess I'm not answering the question because I'm kind of taking the fifth a little bit because it's it it all depends on the company. In order to get, you know, to, to get your footprint, to get your position in your industry recognized, um, you know, the video section of your marketing is essential. That's my point of view. That's my bias. Uh, how we do it, whether it's social media, whether it's on your website, if your website's getting traffic, and there's a reason to do a video is to get people to your to your uh, to your site to see it and to see the other things that'll draw you into engagement with the with the company and to get recognized you know because the minute that you have um, an opportunity to say take your like I'm gonna go back to those old advertising uh, scenarios I was telling you about to take like this 14 minute project and make it into a one minute television commercial and you have the media power behind it all of a sudden you've made a one minute, branded documentary that's going on the air. So I, I guess that's what I'm saying. It's like many, many of the social media, um, you know, people that are talking even about themselves, they're on there and they're showing some footage of their company or they're doing anything like that. Uh, it's, you know, branded means that your, your company's in the movie. Correct. <laughs> and a documentary can mean a lot of different things. 
So, so that's kind of a roundabout way. But when when it's when it's finished, and you get into and you honestly, this, this, this is the truth. When it's finished, and you and you all of a sudden go into the the um, category of of award entries, you see a lot of different categories. Is it a strictly B two B film? Kind of, kind of could be. Depends how many categories you have. I mean, I'm just being <laughs> really true. honest. And and I just as a side note here, Friday or Thursday, uh, a few days ago, it doesn't doesn't matter. Um, I went out to the client for something else altogether, and um, one of the marks handed me this envelope, this envelope right here, and this envelope said, "It's it's a, a Summit International Awards. This is a, an event in Portland, Oregon." And uh, we get the winner notification for three categories there. Um, and so all I'm saying is that we were recognized as the um, best uh, a bronze award uh, for the best B2B corporate film, best B2B corporate film over 25K in budget, and the uh, best direction, directing. So um, it's just... Uh, just more, they didn't, you know, honestly, they didn't have a branded documentary category. <laughs> <laughs> Let's create one. Well, I know you, and I know that the point of this conversation is not about awards per se, but what they, what this should inspire marketers and their clients to think about is applying for awards as well, because they are marketing um, tools. And sometimes you're so exhausted by the end of something and you know, it's good, but you don't take that time. So I encourage, and I'm needing to listen to my own advice for that as well. And then also you put yourself in the hands of the most capable people to do so at those who have awards, but those who can show you their experience. And as I said, you know, Keith, with your experience with the films and the videos and the advertising, there's no one who can do this better. And um, and it's not a, a project, this magnitude is not faint of heart. And I'm going to give a nod to that there, it's kind of a priceless, it's the word of the day. It's a priceless, um, it's very hard to price or put a price on the value of the return on this. You can do that with your metrics. Does it, what will it do for you later? Uh, but you have to believe in a project like this. You have to believe it's right. And you need to partner with, as a client, you need to partner with your team because they need you to be authentic and telling that story. And, um, and you need a relationship. And I don't, and as you alluded to, this is not the first thing out of the gate that you did with them. This was a process. So I'd really love to ask you, Keith, um, we, we talked a lot about this topic. We did come at it from an award-winning um, perspective, again, of why does that matter? But for anything that you would like our viewers to take away from this conversation, uh, let me let you have the last word. Sure. Well, I, I really appreciate you having having me on. And, and I think what you said before is like, it's, you know, it's a team, it's really a team thing. Um, when, and going back to the question that you asked me is like, who would benefit from this kind of thing? Or, you know, who, what type of uh, uh, project uh, would be suitable for which type of client? And a lot of times you, you really have to kind of go where people are already there. People who already ha have a sense that they need this because you can talk, you know, you, if people honestly, it goes into qualifying people. If they're not ready, if you look at their presence and you go, this, this people are not ready unless they're unless they're looking for you, unless they're looking for me, and 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 that that's uh, you don't have you don't have the um, you can have some, a bit of entry level kind of conversation with them, but you have to go to where people are already doing this kind of thing, and so that there you become in the circle of of go to people to make these kinds of efforts because if you start looking at this type of project. Um, you'll see the other types of projects. You know, when I said this corporate film event that we're going to in, in Cannes uh, is 900 films are there. 
45 different countries. So that tells you that people are doing this type of work. It's, it's not that, you know, so if you're a solopreneur, um, you can do it at a different level. A certain part of my business model works with entrepreneurs, solopreneurs on a different type of level, on a different type of, of scale of budget and everything like that. I help people understand the power of their own presence on camera, for example, of how to get from A to B without spending this kind of money. You know, the scale of our the budget that we had on this project was, was you know, I wouldn't even want to tell people about, about that because A, it's none of their business, and B, it's, 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 you wouldn't make this film. You wouldn't take the animation steps that we had to take. You wouldn't take the demonstration techniques. You wouldn't have the first two days for the first three minutes, we had 19 actors. You wouldn't do that. So I'm saying it's just a different category. However, your company may, I don't know who we're always talking to. There might be people that you just, right under your nose that people are in that type of scenario. Say like we were just about to take that leap. It's all about timing. So is, does that make any, any yeah. kind of sense? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I, I'm sorry. Did you want to say anything else? No, I just, I just, I, I just was, um, just wanted to recap. It's like, a, it's, it's certain part of my business is looking for people that are already in this, doing this, but want a different take on it. Maybe want a different point of view. That's always been my thing is to bring a different point of view to the project and bring something magical and also use my reputation out there in the world to get people to work on a project like this. That's one of the things that is very important that, you know, when they say we'd like to have, you know, tell this story that we're all this kind of making from smoke and mirrors. I need help to do that. I need people who are creative, um, but can also work with within the confines of a say non broadcast budget. Because this, if if we think this costs a lot of money, which it did, but if we were doing this for the Super Bowl, it would cost a hundred times more because you would have you're spending that kind. Of, you're say basically you're spending that kind of money on the media, so you had better spend the money on production because every frame that people are looking at is valuable. So uh, it's it's fun if anybody's interested in even the. Uh, the idea from honestly from from a solopreneur all the way up to someone who's had a company like mobile relay has been there since 1975 um there there's there's a piece of this film making video making um business and strategy that is for you if you want to take uh, if you want to take that leap and and it's a it's a it's a fun leap and it's it's kind of like, you know, you can be a you can be a producer, and you know, and if you've if you've never done it before, it's quite a ride. It's quite quite fun. Well, thank you so much, and I do hope that who's ever watching will just be inspired to consider video more more often. There is nothing like it to um, elevate your brand and generate more revenue. Our information, our contact information has been scrolling at the bottom of this video. We both are on social media and we hope that you all have um, great fun in your marketing and in your revenue producing as well as great results. And Keith, congratulations to you and Mark and Mark and Mark and those 19 yeah. actors and plus that have all that all went into making this film and we look forward to finding out about the experience over over there when you return thank you oh thanks nancy appreciate it